Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction and commentary. Today, we're going to be hopping into a film called Jackie Brown uh, for the first time. This is by Quentin Tarantino. So before we jump into this, um, here to let y'all guys know uh, the template of what we're going to be hopping into. So on the Patreon polls, and we've done this with other films uh, for a good bit for a good couple of months where we look at a certain aspect of filmmaking and we study that specifically we also still study and look at other themes of filmmaking um but today we're going to be looking into screenwriting you know into scripts into um, all things that are like written within uh, the confines of a film and why that's important and i also want to highlight the importance of the writer strike that's going on right now uh guys i don't know how else to say this without being as like commonsensical as I can, but you need writers. <laughs> we need writers. Writer writing in general is probably one of the most powerful forms of storytelling because it has such access no matter where you are, no matter where you're from. If you have a pencil and paper, if you can figure out any form of storytelling, it probably takes some effort in writing it. And I think if you want to improve yourself on being a better storyteller you can enhance your writing and it's such an inviting and open gate to uh, experiencing the world and telling your stories and getting your perspective across and we got to support that always we have to and if that means paying people properly um i don't know maybe we should just do that so yeah uh, if you aren't aware of the writer strike that's going on right now uh, i'll probably put a link in the description just so you can find out a little bit more about that but we are going to be focusing for the next couple of months uh, on films that are specifically geared towards great screenwriting and so and to uh, collaborate with that i really want to make an effort into changing some things up since this is a lot more within the screenwriting realm i am going to be you know taking a little bit more notes as well i got like you know pencil pen i'm not going to be talking as much because we're going to be focusing on dialogue we're going to be focusing on even moments that don't require dialogue that i really want to talk about but if i obviously am rambling on which i do know that sometimes it happens it's just something that you got to be on my side to understand but I'm going to try and make an effort to just write my notes down and then at the end of the film we can get back to these notes and discuss a little bit more on some of the notes that I written down and maybe highlighting some of the features that I like whether it's screenwriting involved or something that I found to be pretty fascinating that I wanted to check out so I'm going to make an effort I can't promise that it's going to be perfect it might take me a couple of films but that's what I'm trying to do. I want to let you guys know I am making an active effort in doing this. And I just think it will also bring a little bit of better uh, quality and gearing my thoughts when it comes to writing and taking notes about screenwriting. So, yeah, I think now that we cleared it, um, I highly recommend, uh, you know, getting into reading, into writing. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, I wish more people did it, <laughs> but it's all it, it hits us all at different ages. So take your time with it. And I'm excited to jump into this film. Obviously, again, it's Quentin Tarantino. That's exciting. I've seen a, like a bunch of his other films, if not all of his other films, except for this which is funny because I believe this is like his very first one. So it's cool being able to see uh, Quentin Tarantino's films, all of them except for the first one, which is pretty hilarious. So I'm excited to jump into it, kind of see some of the things that I like. And I hope that you guys can, you know, make notes of it as well, too. Make sure to comment below if you have any really interesting facts that you would like to share with people. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm not going to talk too much longer. I think you guys get the gist of it, but that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, like always, the best way to support this channel is through the Patreon. Just because I'm not going to be talking as much doesn't mean I don't talk at all. There's still a lot of things that I mentioned in the uncut versions. If you want to learn a little bit more or get a little bit more entertainment that's outside of the YouTube, by all means, you can do that by checking it out on the Patreon and supporting it. It's usually the best way to do it. You can also support this channel by leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. And at the end of the day, you don't have to do any of those things. Just sit back, relax, get your popcorn and snacks as we finally hop into Jackie Brown. If you guys didn't check out what I had to say in the intro, I'm going to say it here real quick. All right, so, so tune in. We're going to be looking at screenwriting. Screenwriting has multiple forms, multiple flows. There's different tempos with screenwriting. And we're going to be observing it all. I feel like Quentin Tarantino has a very fast pace, but he knows how to slow it down, as we saw with The Hateful Eight. So there's a lot of fun with these scripts. I think scripts that have a tempo that can kind of go like this 
are a lot of fun. So let's see it. Let's let's have a blast with this. Yeah, I love that we are not even hearing any dialogue. The dialogue is just talking to us through in tandem with the song, as well as just our character's subtleties as she's running. You know, we make up the story in our heads as we're watching this. Kind of like a music video for a little bit. I like it. I'm sure you guys won't be able to hear the audio, but I'm also assuming that you've watched this film, so you guys know what's playing. <laughs> and that there is a Tech Nine. Nine. Little cheap-ass spray gun made out of sal. <laughs> Yo! Look at these two, man. Look at these two. <laughs> I'm telling you, and what they don't know, that a 45 got a serious fucking jamming problem. Now, I try to steal my customers to a 9 millimeter because it's damn near the same weapon. I ain't got yeah, half dude. the jamming problem. This dude's a bad dude. <laughs> this dude knows his stuff, which, you know, me not knowing, you know, me, I guess me knowing Samuel Jackson gives me an edge, but just from this character and how he's talking about guns and everything. Yeah, this dude is a bad motherfucker right here. He's just repeating shit he overheard. He's any more of a gun expert than I am. You won't? It does not mean he is not a dangerous person. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that does not eliminate that fact. See what I'm talking about? Now that was about a man in New York wants a nine millimeter Smith and Wesson model 5946. Even though there's different tempos, because with Samuel Jackson's character, he's just like more snapping. He talks a lot, but you could tell he's just a dangerous dude. With Robert De Niro's character, more quiet, more reserved, more experienced, dangerous dude as well. We're messing with dangerous characters right here. I can just sense it. Yo, man, <laughs> he gives the best mother look ever. Uh, yeah, I'm censoring myself. The best mother look ever. He does that. Well, tomorrow, now, where are you? You're at your mother's, actually. Put your mother on. Uh, Miss Gilmore. Wow, R.I.P., man. R.I.P. Wow. That's right, it's bail bondsman. Look. I'll let y'all know that, you know, for the YouTube audience that follows my Breaking Bad. Great actors here. Yeah. Yeah. Have some coffee? Go right ahead. Who's that big mandingo-looking nigga you got up there on that pitch? <laughs> Yo. Yo, man. <laughs> That's funny as hell. First or his last name? Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say Beaumont's a Christian name. Records office. I want to make a note how these conversations may not seem important, but whenever I'm shown conversations like this, it reminds me of a French new wave of cinema where they kind of just talk around the subject and it spirals into the center to where it's like, oh, snap, it all makes sense in a way. It's like a stylized version of it. Not to say that the French wave of cinema isn't stylized. Quentin Tarantino definitely puts a modern spin on it. Using, you know, American dialect. Because I feel like, you know, in French, you know, like the French cinema, like in France, it's more polished, you know? It's a lot more artistic and sophisticated. But this is raw and... You know, on the street level. And this nigga is a junkyard dog. He my own personal Johnny Cochran. Matter of fact, he yeah. kicked Johnny Cochran's There's ass. There's a lot of beautiful beats here. I love that the frame has moved. Just one frame and letting the dialogue almost edit the frame itself. It's really cool. I almost see all the other two tonight. There's this group of Koreans over in Koreatown starting this little neighborhood watch thing. And they need some weapons. Love it. I love this, man. Damn, it's just so good witnessing films that just trust their their um, their quality. You know, they just let it run. Keep the camera on. You don't have to cut it. Just let these characters flow. I love that. Can't ride up front with you. You can't ride up front with me. The surprise element is 90% of it. I'm sorry, man, but I ain't getting no goddamn trunk. I love this shot, too. Yep, we see, we've seen this shot before multiple times in multiple films from Quentin. <laughs> Here 
we go. Damn. That's cold blooded. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's cold blooded, man. I have to do 10 years in prison. That's what he did. If you know Beaumont, yeah, he's gonna snitch. you know ain't no goddamn way he can do 10 <laughs> Yep. If you are not cut out for this criminal life, don't do it, man. It might not even be the, you know, the jail sentence that takes you out. <laughs> Sorry, this is Special Agent Ray Nicolette with alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Oh, really? Got Michael Keaton in this, too? What the heck? Man, this is cool. I like it. Otherwise, you'll be in civil brand three weeks before the public defender gets around to you. Hey, Jackie, do you know a guy named... So just judging from the conversation that has just, and like, wrapped around this character who we just thought was a simple, you know, flight attendant. She's clearly smart. From what they just mentioned about her prior record and just the way she's, her stance is too, she's observing a lot. It seems like other people have the higher ground, but I don't think they do. She's giving off this, like, presence of, like, she knows a lot more than she's letting on. She's very observant. I love that airy music that just took over the soundtrack for a little bit when Odell was shown. There's just, again, there's just creepy atmosphere around this character. It's more than just the outfits he's wearing, but, I mean, obviously Samuel Jackson just is able to embody the energy that is just radiating from this character that is felt by everyone. I think it's really good. It's a very great way of improvising a presence. I'm figuring you can take that $10,000 you owe me from Beaumont, move it over to the stewardess. The bond for possession. And that's like, honestly, script writing on the actor's part. You know, I think that's the beautiful thing about it. It's a lot more flexible than just words on a paper. If she had that shit, and mind you, I'm saying if, that was her own personal shit to get high with. Is white guilt supposed to make me forget I'm running a business? <laughs> the respect is there with these two. It, it's there. They respect one another, but it's funny. The dialogue between them. I feel like Odell just can't overrule him. This dude has that 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 wild western stare, <laughs> where there's just so much meaning with just him staring at something. <laughs> he just has the face for it too. I, I gotta say, I love how the edits are put into this. Obviously, the edits aren't wasted on them talking, but it's like their actions are cut into it, but they're very brief, quick shots. So it lets the flow of it, it lets the vibe of it just continue. It's good. He had the nerve and he had the blood, there never was a horse like that. Mm. Nah, she's gonna be ready. She's gonna be ready for him. I definitely feel she will be ready for him. She just puts off that vibe. I know there's like the fact that this film is named after her, obviously, but you know, I'm so immersed in this that I feel like every character can just get capped at any moment. So they're all on an equal playing field. But again, I just feel like her atmosphere lets us know that she is just a lot more observant than she lets on. You ain't say nothing about me. Mm -mm. Oh, that's mighty noble of you. Well, wow, this playing with the light is crazy. This is crazy. You got any reason to be nervous around me? Is that what I think it is? Yeah! <laughs> she got him. She got him. Probably putting that right on his junk. <laughs> Hands from around my throat, nigga. <laughs> Let's go, Jackie. Oh, man. Police start fucking with your mind, start pitting black against black. That's how they do. You know, been doing it since the beginning. Shut your raggedy ass up and sit. <laughs> yeah, she peeps him. She peeps him. There's no light bulbs, but she sees him. Max, how do you feel about getting old? You look great. <sighs> no, I'm 
me asking you, how do you feel about it? That's funny, because, yeah, that's not even what she said. It's funny. I, I really do enjoy the, the conversations here. Well, my ass ain't the same. Bigger? <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing ain't wrong, nothing wrong with, with that. <laughs> that's just, come on, man. That's funny. We said that at the same exact time. <laughs> Good man. Mm. And that shit is more scary than Ordell. Mm. I've written this down, actually. I wrote something about her character. I highlighted it, and it's basically um, reserved, observe, and adapts. And I keyed adapts um, because I feel like that's exactly what she is. I don't want to get too involved within, you know, just the environment and obviously the culture and everything. But her being a black woman and, and being able to adapt and go after things that she wants and stop being pulled over by the cops, by Odell, by, you know, the jail system, by life. She wants to live her life. And in order to do that, she has to be strong, reserved, observant, and able to adapt. So it's cool that what I'm writing down is actually being applied. This is the first time I'm, I'm writing stuff down, so I hope that it's a good balance. I'm going to get a little bit better with it, but, you know, got to start somewhere. I mean, we didn't have that much to say to each other anyway. Mm. I never really got to know him, but I knew enough to know that I wasn't missing much, so. <laughs> that's a great way of saying that. <laughs> that is a great way of saying that. That's that's a good line. I like that. Yeah, well, yeah, I can. Yeah, it looks, I can tell. Wanna fuck? <laughs> <laughs> They're looking around. They see me hand the 10000 to someone. Oh, friend of yours. It is so good to see her just maneuvering. Like, it's, it's like, she's like a real character in this, man. Like, that's really cool. I'll give him that. He's still a fuck up. Uh-oh. Oh, he did not like that. He did not like that. I don't know if he vibed with that one. Let him and the stewardess. And then just... Everybody's trying to get a taste, man. I think that's what makes these characters just so weighted, man. It's interesting. I knew it. See, you ain't had to say nothing. I know that bitch. No, I don't understand why you keep someone around your business. You can't even trust them. I ain't gotta trust that. I know her. Um, that line when he said, don't have to trust someone. He knows the person. That means he doesn't trust them. He just knows it. Meaning that he always goes with his gut. That's what I implied from that which means jackie might be in some danger because if he feels like he knows you he doesn't have to trust you he's just gonna trust himself interesting but that you know that's a character flaw with him too all right so we straight yo his character really is a cowboy living in a modern time it's just interesting. I wonder if that was just purposely done, and I'm asking if it was purposely done because he literally walked out of a theater with cowboy western music playing. And it's just funny that I mentioned that beforehand. A lot of reasons. I guess the main one would be uh, I'm tired of it. When did you decide? Interesting. I love how these two, their conversations, always end up being about retirement. Always ending up being about just finally leaving and living your life. Which one? If you had the chance, unemployed now, to walk away with a half million dollars. Ah, yep. Yep. She's asking a whole different question. She wants you involved now. Interesting. Interesting. That was a beautiful, like, just that whole conversation was beautiful you know the reiteration of similar lines the connection between those two and how their connection is a lot more personal 
Whereas everyone else, it's still personal, but it's not as personal as like just being able to leave and live your life. It's fascinating. I love how these conversations are intertwined with one another. Hmm. All right, he's involved. She has so many chess pieces on her board right now, and I and I don't want to get too involved with it but like i hope she's not using him as well too our character that's played by robert foster you know because again her key trait is her being able to adapt in any situation you know you know if, if it comes down to it if it's sacrificing the money and saving robert foster's character would she do it i'm not sure uh oh you peep something he peeped something. That that other girl's involved. Yeah, that's the same girl that that was performing a show for Robert De Niro's character. Wow, 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 wow. There's a lot playing around right now. Oh, no answer. Now you gotta listen to this, man, because this concerns you. All right. Lou. <laughs> Yo, Lou is high as hell, man. <laughs> this bro is stoned. He's just smoking this whole movie, man. That's hilarious. I still sense that he's dangerous as hell. Everything's the same except for one change. I told him Wardell's changing the mount he's bringing in. Think they bought it? Mm. Oh, yeah, I got him thinking that. Man, this is really good. It's like, it's like, who is going to get this money? Is it just going to be her or is she going to share it with Robert Foster's character? I'm really interested on that part. Or is she gonna? Or is she? Is he just another pawn? So he's sweating a little bit. He's gonna keep his half meal where it is, but he's gonna bring in fifty thousand just in case he needs bail. It'll be more than that. Oh, don't be so literal. The only reason I'm focused on their conversation again is because of their conversations. Like, like who's talking to the real Jackie Brown here? I think they all are, but which one she's gonna get the money to really? Ours. Where are you going? Delamo Mall. Catch a movie. Maybe something to eat. What you gonna see? Something that starts soon and looks good. True. Have fun. That's a vibe. Just going out to a movie theater and just... I do that still to this day, man. I went and saw Parasite in the movie theater by myself just because I was like, it's a vibe. It was a vibe. <laughs> this girl's going to ruin everything. <laughs> Man, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? I feel it. I feel it. No wonder you went to jail. Is it this aisle, Lewis? Is it? Yo, you better stop playing with him. You better stop. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> okay, Lewis. Whoa! Oh, what the hell? I was not expecting him to do that. I said it was. Yo, what the heck? Yo, he just cold-blooded murdered her in broad daylight, man. Yo, so he took it for himself. I think that was his plan the entire time. Like he was gonna, he was gonna take it for himself in the beginning. That was crazy, yo. What the hell? <laughs> what the heck? Oh my god! That gun, that gun audio sounded like real as hell too. Ah, <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Let's see how this works out, man. Mm. It's Jackie Brown. Yep. Yeah, he's not dumb. He's not dumb. That's crazy that he pieced that together. And it's because of his ideology. He, he knows people. Damn. What if she gave the money to somebody else first, 
before Melanie even went in the dressing room. Uh-huh. You know what? What? Uh, you know... Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah, oh, they are in danger, man. They're in danger. Damn. Do the reason, motherfucker. The reason is, your ass ain't worth the shit well, no you, more. You better fucking back off, man. <laughs> Woo! God! Damn. Damn. You're short. That goes a long way of backing up your story. I'll settle for a devil mark, Bills. I mean, I gotta say, this this guy's good. <laughs> I gotta say, he's good. I'm frustrated. But, but, he's, he's, he's a good detective. He's, he's piecing it together. He knows something's awry. Is that the word for it? About old Beaumont. And if she go to the police, you tell her I will name her ass as my accessory. Damn. Yup. 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 He ain't going down without bringing down everybody. The power of information here is crazy. They don't have your winning personality. Sure thing. I don't have to know what I'm doing, just as long as you know. I think I do. That's a great line. Talk about the trust they have. I don't know what I'm doing as long as you know. That's that's trust. We're talking about trust being a theme here. That's trust right there. Odell is, is a problem. Like, you cannot, you cannot mess with this dude. You know you like the Dell Phonics? They're pretty good. And another thing, too, I got to say about the dialogue, just because of that moment, you get rewarded from things like that. Like, like that dialogue between these two characters are only shared because of the minor things that these characters have done on their own, right? Like, dialogue like this, like, if you just pay attention, you get rewarded from paying attention. And I feel like that's something that Quentin Tarantino is very uh, then knowing of. I love that the theme of the lights tur being turned off kind of continue, because remember when they first... Did they fit? Oh, wow. Oh, that's so good. Okay. That's crazy because I remember they first met. He was turning the lights down. Damn, they set him up. Mm. Thanks. Wow. Wow, man. This story is so good, man. It's so good. We're leading up to that moment, and just so many things could have happened. Three days later. I hear they don't eat dinner until midnight. Uh, you have a good time. You sure I can't twist? Thanks for saying that. Aw. But no. Ah, okay, I'm happy with this. Okay, this is good. This is good. Cowboy. Cowboy! Ha <laughs> ha! He still got it. <laughs> Damn, this was cool, man. Yes, that's a very serious offense. Is your son still in school? Does his father? This is as much of a film that that he's a part of, just as much as Jackie's. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, this song hits different now. I can't, you know, let y'all hear it, but uh, it's the same song from the very beginning. I'm telling you, they have so much importance. It's all about her just escaping, getting out. Wow. So good. Damn. All right, guys, and that is the end to Jackie Brown. All right, everybody, and we just got done Jackie Brown. This was a incredible start to us looking into screenplay and just writing in general when it comes to filmmaking and you know i've written some notes down here and i think um i was i was pretty accurate on some of the predictions of just overall what this film is really showcasing you know um obviously there is a story that's involved but what i try my best to highlight especially you know as a director there's nuances that goes even deeper 
behind the script. So, for example, when, you know, there's something being shown to us on a script, it's like, why? You know, why does these words, why, why is the sentence, why is this movement of a character uh, personal to our characters, personal to the story? What is what is the reasoning for all of it, you know? Um, and it's just like, you know, seeing seeing like all the things here but yeah i've written down a lot of things you know and how this how this film really took uh inspiration and i feel like quentin Tarantino probably has mentioned this in the documentary but from the french wave of cinema if you guys haven't watched french uh films i highly recommend it it's incredible in its approach of storytelling and how they do it how they incorporate storytelling it's really incredible but it's a lot more polished it's a lot more geared towards artsiness and i know that can kind of throw a lot of people off but the reason why i'm saying it is that quentin tarantino he modernizes it he you know he he gets the subtlety and he stylizes it and puts it into a the American dream, really, and he's able to warp the vocabulary, the dialogue, the characters around this very unique form of storytelling, which is like a French form of storytelling, and it gives us this pacing, it gives us this texture that I feel as though a lot of other stories can't really do, like, for example, you don't see There Will Be Blood being stylized like this, not to say There Will Be Blood is not good or anything, it's a great film. But just to showcase the different forms of storytelling, I think was really cool. Odell was a fascinating character. A fascinating character. I, I wrote down that he only trusts himself, um, but he secretly wants to trust others. Um, you know, this line that he says, you know, he doesn't have to trust, he only knows. You know, that's that, that weighs so much with how he moves, right? Like once, if he knows you, then he doesn't have to trust you, even though he wants to. He doesn't have to trust you, and that makes him a pretty formidable opponent, one that is, you know, unpredictable, still predictable, but unpredictable in the sense of where you won't know when he'll figure it out and, and clue you out, and, and I should say gun you out. You won't know it. So he was formidable. I loved um, Robert De Niro's character. I think his name was Lewis. You know, him being reserved, quiet experience is what I wrote down, but... I, I love that his uh, it wasn't it wasn't anything deep really about him. He's just old. <laughs> he was just literally an old man, you know. He uh, that that scene where he just shoots Melissa, I think her name was, it's crazy, insane. I, I love just the 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 wrench that was thrown in there. Um, it was just so fascinating, but you can sense it. You could tell that he was dangerous. Now, Mrs. Brown's character, uh, I said Miss Brown, uh, Jackie Brown's character was just incredible. I think it's such an underrated character that I he I don't hear as much. You know, we, we, you know, we first think of Kill Bill when it comes to Quentin Tarantino's characters, especially with the when they're women. Um, but Jackie Brown, holy moly, like, yeah, she's not slicing and dicing people up and on like a revenge story, but damn, like her her uh you know the key terms being reserved and being reserve observe and that ad adaptation like being able to adapt and being able to lay the pieces together while still being genuine because the whole time if you notice i was struggling to see if she was just going to use um uh, uh robert uh, you know robert foster's character um as a pawn you know, as just another piece just for her to get out. But the reason why I held on to the hope of them, you know, either getting out together or just making it out alive is because of their conversations. You know, if you listen to their conversations compared to all the other conversations, their similarities, you could tell that they've been through things. It's not shown what they've been through, but you could tell that they're both experienced in the act of living and wanting to just get out, wanting to just continue living and getting out of the game and i love that with robert foster's character um max i think his name was uh he had this cowboyism to him you know he had this western frontier which i know is always you know that does inspire quentin tarantino's and it was hinted at several times um, in this film as well too but there's this there's this wanting and longing of getting out of wanting to just escape and leave your life from all the struggle of it and 
oh man, it was just so good. Like it, it's really, it's really rewarding when you're able to piece together certain things and interpret and see them unfold in ways that are just even better than you even thought could have happened. So that's something that I've written down as well too. But guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Again, um, you know, I, I want to highlight, you know, the writer's strike that is going on right now and just the importance of telling a story. It starts with writing. It starts with, you know, consuming literature and, and, and getting to the point to where you can write a, and craft a story. And those are important. Oral tradition has always been one of humanity's greatest things. And I will continue to believe that. So it doesn't stop here and it i hope it no i don't even hope it won't stop here i won't let it stop you know personally and i hope that you guys won't let that stop either and you guys support your friends who are trying to be uh storytellers i hope you guys support your families who are trying to be storytellers i hope you're supporting you know directors that you in, that uh, that you aspire to like quentin tarantino like it doesn't just start from the top storytelling is like i said in the beginning is a gateway to everyone everyone has the potential to tell a story whether it's theirs or something that just highlights a perspective and that shouldn't stop here we should reward these people we should pay these people we should give proper respect to these people who are putting their time and effort whether if it's you know their daily job or their personal hobby we got to support storytelling all right so i want to end that there um i'm getting better at writing so that's cool <laughs> that's cool it was cool i, I like the experience of writing down my thoughts letting the film kind of play out and then digesting into it at the uh, later end of the video i feel like i have a lot more to say so i hope that it wasn't too much of a craziness i hope that you guys stick around to listen to me talk more about these films um but yeah guys i appreciate it jackie brown was awesome let me know what your thoughts are i would love to hear your thoughts on all that i had to say you guys know the drill stay healthy and stay hydrated because we are just getting started purple jacket pocket full of weed Everything that I should ever need Grab some matches cause they give them free Just like my time Hair pulled back in the backseat